Hi guys. It is a lovely summer evening. It is the second to the last summer evening of 2022. That would be Tuesday, September 20th, 2022. So I'm sure you guys have been wondering where the little dog and I have been for the past week. Well, we have been at a Doomer meetup, a Doomer meetup right here at Bugs in a Jar Farm, I'm embarrassed to admit. And good Lord, guys, I do not know how I survived the last week with, I, I have to admit, you, you know, I mean, I love these folks on some level, but, but you know, these folks were, were truly just the most dreary, the, the, the dreariest, gloomiest, most boring, just, uh, I don't know what these people do with their lives. You know, everybody here, of course, they were wearing black. Uh, they just were morose, depressed, lethargic, uh, not, not, never a smile, never, never a laugh. Uh, just, uh, it, it was, you know, just a descent into doom and gloom and uh, just, just like, what the hell? Uh, just, just, just yuck. Why would anyone want to hang around a bunch of doomers? And, uh, I have to admit, guys, after, uh, after spending, uh, how many days with this bunch of doomers. I've had it with them. I, I am, uh, I have to admit, we have had a turning point. And uh, Sam Mitchell at Collapse Chronicles is no longer a doomer. Sancho is so thrilled to hear that I am done with the doomosphere. I am no longer a prophet of doom. I am a prophet of... A prophet of... <laughs> A prophet of a prophet of a pro prophet of hope. There you go. Okay, and we're gonna kick off my new prophecy right here. The Christian Science Monitor. Uh, the Christian Science Monitor is always kind of, I don't know, rolled off my tongue like the flat Earth. Uh, science monitor, but anyway, we won't get into that. Uh, but the the Christian Science Monitor has now become my new beacon of my new beacon of new beacon of oh, all right, take it away. Rise of the climate optimist. Yes, rise of the climate optimist, pushing back against gloom. Yes, we have heard enough of the doom and gloom. I am joining the rising tide of optimists, pushing back against gloom. Hallelujah. Take it away, Christian Science Monitor. There is a sense of calmness, not a sense of calm, there is a sense of calmness in rural Idaho and rural Iowa. Its beauty is not lost on Marcy Frank, but the be the beautiful vastness of the GMO and fossil fuel fertilizer soaked corn and soybean fields across the horizon is not what sticks with Ms. Frank. Each time she pays a visit to her parents-in-law in the Midwest. Rather, it is the wind turbines she sees in the distance. This is Sancho Panza, the faithful squire of the uh, of uh, Don Quixote, the wind mill uh, tilting uh, knight errant. Anyway, rather, it is the wind tur turbines she sees in the distance. It is the thought of how the machines gently rotating, gently rotating, 
100 mile an hour to 180 mile an hour bird killing gently rotating blades generates clean energy destined to travel across the region through thousands of miles of high voltage power lines and into people's lives. It, meaning the gently rotating blades of clean energy, it is the fact of progress in innovation, the fact of progress in innovation. Take it away, Ms. Frank. They, meaning wind turbines, are an emblem. <laughs> they are an emblem of <laughs> wind turbines are an emblem of <laughs> 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 hope and our future. Yes, they are. Wind turbines are an emblem of our future. Yes, and if you want to see another picture of a emblem of <laughs> hope and our future, right here in this photograph next to it, farm and food investors face 100 50 billion dollar loss on climate change. Anyway, back to the story. Ms. Frank fashions herself, as does Sam Mitchell at Collapse Chronicles, a prophet of optimism. Yes, a prophet of optimism by job title as well as by her approach to life. Yes. In what many call, what many of those doomy gloomers, gloomy doomers, call the Anthropocene, an epic, an epic epoch of human dominance over the planet. She is the author of the Climate Optimist newsletter from the Center for Climate Health and the Global Environment at Harvard University's T.H. Chan School of Public Health. Frank is part of a growing movement of thought leaders. The thought leaders now joined by uh, Collapse Chronicles who are opting to focus their attention on the positives, on the positives of humankind's efforts to address climate change. Their message is not just the progress that is happening, you know. That is not the only part of the message is all of the progress humankind is making against climate change, but also that also that also that Hope, yes, is a crucial enabler of it. The crucial enabler of the message of progress is the H word. Yes. Without some focus on ha ha, without focus on ha ha, <laughs> hope the daunting scale of the climate problem can too easily lead toward doomerism. Yes, can too easily lead toward doomerism, depression. Like all of these depressed people hanging around the bugs in a jar farm, they were even, were these doomers even depressing you, Sancho Panza? Were you being depressed by all of these gloomy doomers taking over your yard? And of course, the I word, in action. Yes. The daunting scale of the climate problem 
can easily lead toward inaction. Okay, take it away. Ms. Frank, quote, being optimistic and having, 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 I think is a practice, is a practice where you can recenter, you can focus on the things that are going right and focus on the solutions that are already taking hold. Yes. While hard to measure, climate optimism in the United States has become more visible in the past few years. In part, it is a response to pessimism. Yes, a re optimism is a response to pessimism to a rising sense of feeling either overwhelmed or powerless that there is nothing humanity can do. So that all of these doomy gloomers, gloomy doomers sitting around here acting like there's not a damn thing that, uh, that, that humans can do to turn this freight train around at this point. Not a damn thing they can do. I can think of all things they can do. Can you think of anything they can do? They can have a doomer meetup. That's what they can do. What do you, what do you think they can do? Such a punzo. What do you think humanity can do to turn this freight train around? All right. One sign of the times in a 10 nation survey last year published in the health journal The Lancet, 59%, 59% of young people aged 16 to 25 said they are extremely or very worried about being screwed by climate change. Confronted with this, the optimists are not, the optimists are not dismissing the urgency, but arguing that action, that action can make a difference. And that sometimes, sometimes alarmism has been counterproductive. So, for Mrs. Frank, for Ms. Frank, some of her newsletters deal head-on with topics like how to maintain poise amid what she calls the emotional roulette wheel of climate change. Yes, while others have pointed to, quote, Climate things going right. Climate things going right. Yes, they do not list any climate things going right, but right next to this story, I guess maybe climate change threatens health and survival of urban trees. I don't know why they limited it to urban trees. There's plenty of uh, rural trees around here, but anyway, I don't know if those are climate things going right or not. Okay, other examples of the trend, the book Generation Dread, new this year from researcher Britt Ray, tackles how people can strengthen their resilience in the face of eco-anxiety. Podcasters and advocacy groups are working to counter pessimism, as are bloggers inside and outside the lefty environmental realm. Yes, we cannot have any pessimism in the environmental realm. Get those numbers out of air. Meanwhile, <laughs> Guys, I, I really cannot make this up. Meanwhile, an initiative called Global Optimism, Global Optimism is backed by none other than Christiana Figueres, the former 
UN, UN climate official who helped broker the 2015 Paris Agreement on Climate, seeking to convey that the climate crisis is both daunting and conquerable. You like that word, conquerable? That is a strong, positive, optimistic word, conquerable. You know, those damn uh, gloomy doomers out there depressing the hell out of me for the past week in my own yard could use the word conquerable in their vocabulary. Never heard of the word conquerable in a week. In a week. Did you ever hear the word conquerable? We should have talked. We should have invited Christiana Figueres, the former UN climate official. Okay. But that's not all. Scientists, probably these flat earth scientists, you know, from the, I love it when the Christian Science Monitor is talking about scientists. Scientists, too, are pushing back against the notion of a point of no return for the planet. Come on. Scientists are pushing back against that notion. Quote, this is University of Maine climate scientist Jacqueline Gill. I've already mentioned this, but I'm, it bears repeating. Jacqueline Gill, what do you have to say about this? We are not through a threshold or past the threshold. There is no such thing as a pass-fail when it comes to to the climate crisis, close quote. Some who track the climate issue say optimists, optimists are meeting a genuine need. Yes. <clears throat> if we are to collectively face the threat of climate change as a whole, meaning as a whole species, I guess, quote, this is Dr. Han Dr. Andrew Hoffman, a professor of sustainable enterprise at the University of Michigan and the author of How Culture Shapes the Climate Change Debate. Okay, so listen to Dr. Andrew Hoffman of the professor of sustainable enterprise. I've never heard the term sustainable enterprise but now that I am a prophet of optimism, I like the term better and better. Sustainable enterprise. So he says if we are to collectively face the threat of climate change as a whole, quote, the thinking is that if I can show you a future you want to aspire to, I will un unleash your creative energies and you will strive toward the best. Yes, people should understand the consequences of global warming, Dr. Hoffman quickly adds, but they can't stop there. You can't stop at understanding the catastrophic consequences of global warming to truly understand, you, you know, uh, is to quote, take a look at all the possibilities. Well, I, I, I did hear some talk of, about the various possibilities. Uh, we did hear some possibility talk around the Doomer meetup. Not quite sure they are the possibilities that Dr. Hoffman had in mind, but I am with Dr. Hoffman from here on out. Even as signs of the climate challenge mount, there are indications that innovation is opening new doors and that people can act effectively when they feel agency. In California, consumers recently saved the state from blackouts during a severe heat wave by responding to an official appeal to curb their energy consumption. In July, Texas faced a similar situation. Not only were Texas citizens called into action, the state's renewable energy sector was also able to step up its production. 
Yes. Successes such as these, however modest, should be noted more widely. They should be. You know, we should note these successes more widely about how the good citizens of the great state of Texas stepped up to the plate and kept from dying in mass by heat stroke. Yes. Because to take a fatalistic approach is, quote, to risk people throwing up their hands in the air and not doing anything. Yes? Are you throwing up your paws in the air and not doing anything? Sancho Panza? This is Christopher Barreal, a researcher at the University of Nevada in Reno. He recently penned an essay on why scientists must remain optimistic in combating climate change. We might come back to uh, Christopher's essay. They have a link to it. I have not read it yet. Huh. Huh. Uh, 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 oh, may be a boost, not just for climate action, but also for people's individual wellness, judging by research on the correlation of optimism with better overall health. As optimism tussles with doubts in public thought, the question looms, can we define the climate crisis before it defines us? I'm not sure defining, anyway. Millions of people are already being displaced each year by extreme weather related events. Humanity is now having to focus on adapting to climate change alongside efforts to stabilize Earth's temperatures by curbing greenhouse gas emissions. But still, Dr. Barreal says, big ideas, big ideas in action are not just needed, but possible. Quote, the fact is, the fact is, we can actually solve this problem. There you go. You heard it in the Flat Earth Science Monitor, where a scientist saying the fact is we can actually solve this problem. So how are we doing this? How about the Inflation Reduction Act? Yes, recently signed by President Joe Biden, which authorizes $369 billion in energy and climate spending now, I think some of that $369 billion authorizes the biggest, uh, I think it authorizes the single biggest expansion of offshore oil drilling in American history, and I think it authorizes uh, some of that $369 billion off, authorizes opening up oil and gas drilling in Alaska. I I think it authorizes, uh, you know, fast lining uh, and, you know, permits for pipelines. I think there's like $54 billion for asphalt and concrete. Uh, anyway, that $369 billion is a step in the right direction. Yes, climate policy experts say, I'm, and I'm so tired. Uh, of, of these gloomy doomers talking trash about Joe Biden saving the planet by, by you, you know, doubling, tripling the amount of offshore uh, oil drilling. Uh, you go, Joe Biden. It's time for us to stand up and defend Joe Biden. Anyway, what else do we have? Of course, we need to wrap it up with the elegance of turbines, the elegance of turbines <laughs> across the wide Iowa horizon, 
is another example. Yes, the elegance of turbines across the wide Iowa horizon. There you go. It is in these moments, in these moments, that Ms. Frank, the climate optimist, sees an opportunity to take stock in our shared success. Quote, it is human nature to focus on the problem, but it feels so much better to focus on the solution. You got it, girl. You go, girl. It just feels so much better to focus on the elegance of turbines across the wide Iowa horizon. I wonder what Miguel Cervantes, uh, what, what do you think, Sancho Panza? What do you think uh, your masters, uh, what do you think Don Quixote would have had to say about the elegance of turbines across the wide Iowa horizon uh, 500 years ago? Do you think Miguel Cervantes would be a, uh, would be a prophet of optimism or not? Yes. And of course, the solution of the Inflation Reduction Act. So the two solutions we got to hear about were the Inflation Reduction Act and wind turbines. All right. And if you liked those stories from the Flat Earth Monitor, how about heat, drought, fires, floods, Texas grapples with a new era Yes, and of course, we have a cover story on uh, the Flat Earth Monitor that somehow escaped my attention, but I do need to read it next. Cover story, meet the scientist moms fighting climate change for their children. <laughs> The scientist moms fighting climate change for their children. Anyway, uh, it's great to be back at Collapse Chronicles. We need to think of a new name for Collapse Chronicles now that I am a fellow prophet of optimism. Okay, little dog. You look like you're stressed out. Do you, do you not want me to become a prophet of optimism, or what? We need to go celebrate the elegance of turbines across the wide Iowa horizon. Uh, Jesus. I gotta go wash about 300 dishes from all of these carnivorous doomers. Never seen so much bacon since I left Georgia. Good God, how many pounds of bacon? Do those doomers go through? I think they mainline bacon. I smell bacon cooking right now. Good Lord. Just can't get the smell of bacon out of my nose. Do you smell bacon cooking too? Bye, guys.